Hey everyone, I'm Mary Beth McAndrews, and I am so excited to be here today with Damien Levesque, director of A Creature Was Stirring, another incredible holiday horror um, to really just make this holiday season merry and bright and bloody, I think. Um, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm so good. Um, it, it is the year I feel of even more holiday horror, and I'm not upset about it. And I love that you have taken you know, not a creature was stirring. We know all of, like, we know that phrase, but have a movie now, a horror movie inspired by that. So I'm curious what attracted you to the story because Shannon Wells is the writer. So what attracted you to the story and what kind of um, brought you into wanting to tell this particular tale of holiday terror? Well, it's, it, well, first of all, I should say that it wasn't originally set during the holidays, but- Oh, really? We did, okay. we, we I... got, you know, it was still set during a blizzard and everything. So it wasn't hard to change okay. it to being set during the holidays. But, you know, I had heard rumblings that Holiday Horror was on the uptick. So we uh, we <laughs> adjusted the screenplay accordingly for the market. And, and and actually, I have no shame for that because it ended up working out great. But this movie checked all the boxes for me. It has character-driven, it's character-driven horror it, with characters with lots of layers, um, lots of subtexts. It deals with some heavy themes. It's a movie that's about something. Um, it's scary. It's got a phenomenal monster. So it was like, wow, this is this is great. Let's just let's do this. Um, and yeah. Shannon has a very unique writing style that I really admire, and it worked so well. And um, that's the reason why I chose it. Hell yeah! Well, and I mean, like you said, the Christmas, especially with the lighting. I want to talk about the lighting because almost all of this lighting comes from like it looks like it comes from the Christmas lights. It's not overhead. We're we're in a house this whole movie, but we're using candy like light up candy canes. We're using Christmas lights throughout the house. So I wanted to hear more about lighting this and really leaning into like the holiday lighting vibes in this. I really love how y'all handles particularly like the lighting and the framing of everything in this movie. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, we had, because it was set during the holidays and because there were so many Christmas, you know, multicolor Christmas lights on set, that was definitely sort of our jumping off point for the, for the yeah. color palette. But we also were very much leaning into uh, you know, taking risks with the color and really going far yeah. like Dario Argento style and yeah like um, all the reds on their faces I'm like oh we're yes. just going full into the red like the lighty like the light reds and I or like lighting with red and I was really into that <laughs> absolutely and it's, it's, it's similarly and uh, you know in that same vein making it very nostalgic and a throwback to 80s horror and an 80s monster horror where you see more of the sort of like deep saturated blues but then also we we were very intentional about the way that we tied the colors into the themes and the characters of the story. So, you know, Charm, the daughter, her character is more blues and reds, whereas Faith, the mom, is more greens and yellows. So we kind of kept with that throughout the movie. And um, that, you know, we, we, lit, we lit certain scenes depending on sort of who was dominant in the scene. So cool. That's awesome. I love that. And like that use of like the unnatural color palettes for lighting lends that fantastical element of the film I think too you know what I mean like it's already a wild premise so why not lean into that with the lighting and we already absolutely and I have to give uh, major props to my phenomenal DP Alexander Genesi he put a little one of those little uh you know brother notes those printed notes on the monitor on the camera that said f rules take risks and we were always being monitor, uh, be, being aware of that every time we were shooting. We were like, when we're lighting a scene, we are going to lean into this full bore. Hell yeah, that's amazing. Were there any moments that like you were really stoked on that you followed that kind of mantra and you were like, I'm so glad we did this because it turned out so well. Like, were there any particular scenes or moments in the film? Oh, definitely. It was uh, the lasers when we, we you know i and you might not even know they were lasers but whenever the you start seeing like crazy lights on the wall those are concert lasers and i had oh, this idea shit. because i i was i was on instagram and like you know i follow a bunch of people on instagram a bunch of artists and stuff and i i follow this guy who who does who programs lasers for concerts and i started thinking to myself what a wild oh, job by the way programming yeah. lasers for concerts like right on Yes, yes. So I went and I went to his studio and I, I saw the stuff that it could do. And I was like, okay, I definitely want to do this for this movie. So it was used very specifically for scenes where we're getting inside of the mom's head. And it creates this, you know, I was inspired by sort of like electrical synapses on neurons. 
that was sort of my thinking behind using these lasers oh. and um it was it was really fun and it turned out really really cool there, there's a particular shot where you know she's when she's confronting the beast and she looks up and you see like these lines kind of going up like this um you know behind her these are all like little spikes spiky lines that's done that is done by by firing a laser through fog and adjusting the shutter speed on the camera or the shutter speed or the refresh rate or something like that on the camera that so that it you actually because the lasers are refreshing too but they're doing it like yeah. thousands of times a second but you can actually film it to make it look like there's light floating in midair and that's what we did it's really cool that is so fucking cool filmmaking is magic i swear it really it's always, is. Like, when, like i've talked to so many filmmakers and every time i'm always just always so stunned by like all the creativity and ways that we make horror and construct like even the lighting it's just so neat oh. yeah I'm, I'm glad that you liked it it was it was it was definitely and i definitely wanted to make a movie that looks different from everybody else's well yeah because we all know what holiday horror kind of looks like so yeah. getting going a little bit different, I think, helps again, because like you said, holiday horror is hot and there's so many kinds of holiday horror and creating that visual language to make it stick out, I think, is so helpful in a sea of not sea, but, you know, an increased amount of holiday horror films. Yeah, definitely. Well, and you have a monster and I wanted to hear more about constructing the monster and designing the monster and like what that process was like. And if there were any inspirations in particular for your beast um, and what that like about what that would look like. Start with we start with the script and I worked mm -hmm. with a creature concept artist named Michael Epinette, who's incredibly talented. And he read was in what was in the script and I gave him some sort of reference images and we went back and forth in this really fun process looking at the anatomy of of bugs and of monsters and real life, you know, real life creatures Ooh. from around the world and and sort of deciding like what sort of functions, uh, or what sort of like I know attributes do we want this monster to have? And then we ultimately ended up with this, you know, fantastic, just incredible creature that um it looks, you know, that th th was sort of like the money is no object version of it, right? But then when you go into production, you have to build the thing. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it's like it's like drawing it's like drawing a house that is like skinny on the bottom and like wide on the top you know and like well you give that to an engineer and he's going to be like uh Ooh. you can't do this right <laughs> <laughs> so um you know you have to make certain adjustments to your design a so that you can build it but also b because of the budget right so you have yeah. to sort of work in these different confines and we did that and that's how we ended up with the monster that we have today that still has a lot of resemblance to the to the um, uh, original concept art and um you know i'm proud to say that we we created a terrifying monster that's different from any other creature that you've seen now i have been heavily inspired by critters the thing gremlins yeah. um you know these uh, these monsters and the, the practical effects in those movies are, are are those are that that's what keeps me alive that's what keeps gold me going standard you know, like, practical effects like we all see that and we're like i want to make something just as gooey and gross as that like <laughs> exactly yeah yeah for sure um and there's something about working with practical effects with practical monsters with with an actual monster on set that your actors and your crew can see and react to and um it makes it it makes the process all the more fun for me so I, there is something about having it there like you know it's not a real monster but like if you can feel that presence and like the it, like the size of the monster i feel totally. like that's so important and it you was big bugs, it was though. what kind tall. of bugs oh how tall was it almost eight feet tall oh who has it now is it you have it in your house Let me see. i don't i have it in a warehouse it's very big it's you know and it Fair, it eight foot <laughs> you have to put it on you have to put it on a whole like mannequin thing to keep make it stand up Oh my God. You've heard of Elf on the Shelf. Now a creature was stirring in your house. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but you said, but you always have bugs. Were there any bugs that I guess like insp that particularly inspired you? I love hearing about that. Um, there, there are some freaky bugs out there. <laughs> oh, bugs are incredible. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'd have to go back and look at my artwork and okay. see like what we, what we have, but nothing off the top of my head. Okay, cool. Um, I wanted to pivot to your cast because you have a really amazing cast. You have Scout Taylor Compton, who is obviously a contemporary scream queen, but also Chrissy Metz in a horror movie, which I feel like everyone is probably like, whoa, this is us. Now she's in a horror film. And I love seeing her in this role and getting to, you know, you know hit a guy in the knee with a nail covered baseball bat and like being this badass. And I was curious what it was like working with her in the hor in this horror film and shaping her, her character specifically, because her character has so many layers going on with her. 
Yeah, definitely. It uh, it was um really cool because I got very excited whenever I found out that she wanted to do the movie because it was such a departure from This Is Us, right? She's yeah. Going, going to this going to this very dark place from this very light place in terms of the characters are concerned. So I really enjoyed watching her transform in that way. And it she you know she had uh, she and I both had very intimate connections with you know the, the themes of addiction um, yeah. with uh, you know with the, the estrangement that Faith feels from her daughter. I mean like these are really heavy subjects, and yeah. it was really great to see the way that she navigated that in her performance. That's amazing, and it is. It's I feel like, and I'm curious what it was like for you in terms of balancing the horror with the deeper message and and, and then looking at addiction because I feel like. It is a hard balance. You want to do justice to the subject matter, but you also are making a horror movie. So I'm curious what that process was like for you and the crew and the actors and to create that balance. And I know it, it starts in the page, but like, and can, but you know, continuing that in your own in direction, what that balance was like for you to strike between the serious subject matter, but also creating like a scary and horror movie that's going to entertain audiences. Well, yeah, what you're referring to in a lot of ways is tone. And how do you yeah. balance the tone of your movie mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't feel like you're so the, so that it doesn't turn into the movie that you uh, the a movie that you don't want it to be? Yeah, and I uh, I don't know that I have a great answer for that other than just <laughs> knowing when I when I have got it when I've got the when I've got yeah. the performance I need and moving on and not 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 dwelling on things too much. Um, but also, um, and by dwelling on things, I mean like dwelling on performance too much and trusting my actors and understanding that yeah. they get it and that they have they also bring their own understanding of the characters too but yeah. um also you know I've been editing film and tv professionally for over 20 years so yeah. I craft a lot of that in the edit too and um uh, striking that edit. balance the edit is, is so important everybody I don't know yeah. if everyone knows that's how important the edit is and in, in movies in general but especially in horror movies <laughs> yeah yeah definitely and and that was uh it, you know it's a pleasure editing my own movie i shoot for the edit so i know exactly what i want mm -hmm. I, I edit the movie in my head before i film it i storyboard extensively mm -hmm. so um there's a lot of editing happening on set even if i'm not in front of a computer yeah so yeah because you so you were at your you're not new to directing necessarily but you used, so what was that like jumping from being an editor to a director I know you did the cleansing hour and they so said you're not this isn't your first film directing by any means but what was that like jumping from editing to directing did it feel like a natural kind of progression for you as, it, uh, it was you it know? was very natural for me just because okay. I I you know I did uh I did the cleansing hour short film first but yeah. you know prior to that I'd also produced a uh, field produced some uh, unscripted TV you know it wasn't the first time I'd been behind the camera so yeah. um I I just come in with a really really tight shot list and storyboards and uh, communicate yeah. effectively to my crew and say this is what I want and and we go you know we're very efficient we don't waste any time it's storyboarding and prep work, everybody. I just directed my first film, my first film uh, this year. That's why I'm oh, like, I feel you. that. Congratulations! Like Thank you. Like the prep is so, especially in indie horror, like prep work is the make or break. I feel like from my experience of making a, a lower budget indie horror movie, if you're not prepared, then you ain't gonna make the movie. <laughs> I encourage. I I mean, even though I I, I don't necessarily uh, I won't necessarily storyboard you know like a, a simple dialogue scene but yeah there is still value in doing that and if you're not an editor I would encourage you to do it just because what you're doing is you're effectively constructing the first edit of your movie in the form of storyboards yeah. so um it's a the good stick figure drawings I have in my script of me like storyboarding just dialogue and coverage is just very funny when I look back on it I'm like yeah. look at me storyboarding yeah. stick figures it's so all basic you, it's all you need stick figures yeah it's seriously but away from from that, um, I'm curious. Like, are you a holiday horror person? Like, do you were you a fan of holiday horror movies? Like, is that something you seeked out or a subgenre that you were like interested in at all before making this? You know, not not like I wouldn't classify myself as a holiday horror hmm. person. There are a few oh. that are that I that are near and dear to my heart. I mean, I do love Gremlins. I think it's probably the greatest holiday horror ever made. Um, you know, I I enjoyed uh, Michael Doherty's Krampus and. Oh, I love um, Krampus. I mean, there are some good ones out there for sure. Have you seen Black Christmas, the OG? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, like, there, <laughs> that's, my, that's one of my favorite horror movies, Point Blank. So I'm always like, Black Christmas. Nice. Yeah. Oh, good choice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's, I think that it's maybe coming back. So I hope, I hope that you know, maybe a creature was stirring will add, add to the library of of 
Yes. Horror films that people want to go watch every every and holiday. And more like creature holiday horror. I know we love Santa. I'm like a Santa, like a Santa horror, but I love a yeah. good like holiday horror monster now. Like Krampus. We got holiday monsters, more holiday monsters, I think at least. Like that's what I want. Yeah, you know, and Mike Doherty, he likes to work with uh, practical effects as well. I mean, yeah. Weta did all the practical effects in Krampus and it was, you know, it yeah. looks tremendous. I actually got I've I've gotten to see the actual Krampus monster that they built in person and it is gorgeous. Is it, it is massive? Just gorgeous. How big is it massive? Yeah, it's big. It's pro- it's probably about six feet tall. That's terrifying. That was it's a, like, it's that a, it's was a six foot tall crazy. puppet. It's a giant puppet. It's amazing. That's right. It's a puppet. Because did yeah. you have someone in a suit for yours? Was some was we had well, yeah suit? for when the when the creature is on all fours or standing it's a it's in a suit. Yeah. It's in a suit. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's crazy that there was a person inside of that. That always <laughs> people that do creature effects like inside of the suits blow my mind because you can't see really anything, I feel like right. a lot of the time. Exactly. And that's just wild to be able to do that. Our time is up, Damien, unfortunately. But thank you so much for chatting with me about a creature was stirring and holiday horror and all that good stuff. And everybody check it out this holiday season. A creature was stirring. That's on it's a total pleasure. Yeah. You can pre-order it now on Apple if you have Apple TV app on your Roku or your smart TV.